morning, good morning. Sorry, I was having an issue with my microphone. Um, but I think we're all good now. Awesome. Yes, we are good. Uh, all right. I just want to confirm if my YouTube um, if, I'm, if my YouTube live is on. Yes, it is on. All right. Sorry about the little delay. Every time really does count with us. Okay, guys, welcome this morning to day number 12. As we run through together, it's a day 11 or day 12. All right. As we run through together on um, our Cockrell morning session, and we're running through electrochemistry. The first thing I need you to see is to see this formula page and how I will quickly use this formula page. <clears throat> Please, when you get your formula page in this topic, this is how you are going to use it. Hi, Ramema. All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, everyone who's joined in, good morning. Thank you for the likes. Thank you so much. Now, guys, this is how I'm going to quickly show you how to use this. This is what I do here. When I get my formula page on this topic, I am going to just read downwards, read downwards, read downwards, and read downwards. That is number one. Number two, um, I am going to see this negative. Anywhere I see a minus, I am going to use the word loss. Anywhere I have a plus, I am going to use the word gain. And this E, I will be using the word electrons. All right. So there's a plus here, guys. Mathematically, we are allowed to do that. So please, you need to listen to what I'm going to do and practice this. Make sure you get your formula page and go practice to see if you can really do it. Okay, look at this. The anode is where we lose minus electron. What happens at the anode? If you trace the arrow down, oxidation. Now, what is oxidation? Oxidation is the negative there. Loss of what? There's an E there. Electron. What is reduction? Reduction is the gain of electrons. Which substance is always oxidized? If you trace it down, it's a reducing agent. Define a reducing agent. It is a substance that loses electrons. An oxidizing agent undergoes reduction. An oxidizing agent is a substance that gains electrons. Guys, check how I have used my formula page to define. No need to cram, and I promise you, there's no way you're not going to define any or some of the things I've mentioned. You will definitely. So at the anode, we have oxidation. What happens at the uh, what is oxidized? A reducing agent. An oxidizing agent is reduced. Where will that be? That will be at the cathode. All right. Please, it is very, very important that you and I are able to quickly sort out our definitions. And obviously, we have our tables to use okay so quickly this morning um, let's try to define a few concepts <clears throat> let's try to define a few concept definition what are the definitions that I should be looking at in this topic number one I should be able to define oxidation and uh, number two I should be able to define re Reduction. Okay. Now, when we talk about these two definitions, there are two definitions that I need you to know. Two each. Number one, in terms of electron, which I have defined already, oxidation is the loss of electron, while reduction is the gain of electron. Now, we must be able to define in terms of oxidation numbers. What is oxidation? Oxidation is an increase 
in oxidation number, while reduction would be a decrease in oxidation number. Okay, then we spoke about the agents. All right, number three, reducing agent. Reducing agent. And number four, oxidizing agent. Use your formula page to define this. All right. This is a substance that loses electrons. So it is oxidized. This is a substance that gains electrons. So it is reduced. All right. Number five. Please be able to define what a galvanic cell is. All right. It's a cell that converts chemical to electrical energy. Please make sure you put the word energy there. All right. Number six, an electrolytic cell. All right, a cell that converts what? Electrical energy, electrical to chemical energy. Number seven, be able to define electrolysis. A chemical process. Where electrical energy, electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. I have one more. Number eight, be able to define an electrolyte. An ionic solution that conducts electricity, that conducts electricity through the movement, okay, my space, movement of ions. Guys, eight important definitions for you and I to be able to get some good marks. Electrochemistry is a place where you should be getting 100%. Now, the most important thing for me in electrochemistry would be to quickly show you 10 ways of identifying your cathode and anode. Guys, if you get this particular, electrochemistry is so broad. So after doing um, the 10 ways of identifying, I'm just going to jump into questions because if I want to do what I usually do, we will not even answer any question today. It's quite broad. <clears throat> okay. But no matter how broad it is, guys, I must show you this. How to identify your anode and cathode. There are 10 important things I need you to know. How to identify your anode and your cathode. Okay, um, let's do this. Create a key on the left hand side. All right, our key to um, divide this into two. The first one is to look at the chemical process that happens. What happens at the anode? Oxidation. What happens at the cathode? Reduction. That's the first one. Number two, the flow of electrons. Right? The flow of electrons. Electrons would flow from the anode always the cathode. Please take note. Electrons would move from the anode <coughs> to 
the cathode. Examiners are going to use that. They'll draw electrons flowing. It would always move from the anode to the cathode. Number three, um, electrode potential. Electrode potential. These are the values on that table. All right. Electrode potentials. We can simply use um, a number line, but I will start it by saying more electronegative. More uh, negative electrode potential values. More negative electrode potential values. This is your E cell, all right? That thing there, all right? And this one becomes the more positive one. More positive electrode potential. Electrode potential value. And here, I normally use a simple number line. If I draw a number line, quick number line there, all right, definitely we know this is what? Negative, and this is, let me put that one down, negative, and this is positive. The anode and the cathode. Number four, size of electrode. Is the anode that decreases in size, while the cathode will increase in size. Cathode will increase size. Think about a pregnant woman. The shape of the stomach is a C, and what happens to the mass increases. All right. Now, number five, polarity. I'm going to use polarities. All right, polarity of the electrolytic cell. Let's start from the electrolytic. I use the acronym APE. Simply tells me the anode is positive in the electrolytic oh lovely so if the anode is positive in the electrolytic it means in the electrolytic the gal uh, the cathode is negative all i need to do is to remember the acronym ape electrolytic now number six would be polarity in galvanic all right, I'm just going to switch it now. The anode is negative in the galvanic cell. So it's a switch, positive in electrolytic, negative in galvanic. And the cathode now is positive in the galvanic. All right, we are on number six there. <coughs> we are on number six. Now let's look at number seven. I hope this note would help you. This is to guide you. Examiners are going to want to trick you in so many ways. So let's look at number seven. Number seven. I'll see if I can just uh, run through. Usually I have about 10 ways, 10 things you must know about identifying the anode and your cathode. So let's go to number seven now. We did five and six. All right. Number seven is the movement of ions. The anions will always move to the anode. Anions will move to the anode all the time, no matter the cell. Take note of the, uh, the synonyms there. It is an and an. All right? And the cations will move towards the cathode. Even in the galvanic, even in the salt bridge, cations move 
to the cathode. Always. Always. <clears throat> okay. Now, number eight. Number eight. In the 4B table. All right. This one is on top. Top of the table. So some of, some of you um, use this. So I have to include it. It's the top of the table. What you find on top of the table in the 4B, and this goes to the bottom of the table. The reason um, 4B looks a bit more creative is because we just follow the order. It is the anode on top and the cathode at the bottom. So you would find um, acronyms like A and C, you know, just to help us remember. All right, A and C, just to help us remember. Okay, number nine, quickly. Number nine. Now, in the electrolytic cell, when it comes to electroplating, when it comes to electroplating, <coughs> which one will be the cathode? The material to be electroplated. Material to be electroplated. So if I'm electroplating a ring, that material goes to the cathode. Here, uh, material are electroplating with. Material we are electroplating with. Right? Number 10, electro refining or purification of metals. Right? Purification of metals. The impure metal will be at the anode, while the pure metal will be at the cathode. I hope this 10, I told you 10, and we actually hit the number. Hi, good morning, precious, or princess, rather. <clears throat> and we hit the number 10. All right. I told you there are 10. Please revise, get this 10. Examiners are going to use um, any of this to want to trick you. But make sure that you are good and you are okay. Now, I just want to talk about one more thing and then we'll look at, um, we'll look at questions. Quickly, what are the conditions in a galvanic cell and a salt bridge? Just a quick one. A very quick one. <clears throat> All right. Conditions. The galvanic cell. For one, we have a concentration of a molar, one mole per cubic decimeter. Number two, we have temperature. 25 degrees Celsius, or you can write 298 Kelvin. And number three, we have pressure. Please take note that when we have pressure, okay, we have one atmosphere. This is only used when we have gases. I'm going to compact metalize my board and write so many things. Um, let's quickly talk about the electrode platinum. All right. Platinum is used as an electrode as an electrode because of three main reasons. Number one, it is inert. Number two, it is a conductor. And number three, it is a solid. So that is why. This is why platinum. Now, next question is when do we use platinum? When do we use platinum? Number one, when you have a mixture of ions as your half cell. Your ions are just, uh, your half cell is just a mixture of ions. Number two, when you have a gaseous half cell, mixture of ions half cell. And number three, 
when you have a non-conducting material in the half cell. The half cell. These are the three conditions where you would be needed to use platinum. So please take note of all of that. All right. Salt bridge quickly. Salt bridge. All right. It contains a high concentration, a highly concentrated, let's say, a highly concentrated um, inert ionic solution. So we need something that will not react. Okay. All right. Such as silver nitrate, um, sodium nitrate. Nitrates are always better, and I'm going to tell you why just now. Silver nitrate, we could also have potassium nitrate. <clears throat> but what is the function and how does it carry out that job? Function of salt bridge. I know many of us know that it completes the cute. All right. And number two, it maintains electrical neutrality. Right? Of the half cells. And the question would be how? How does it do that? The anions in the solution, anions in the ionic solution, will move to the anode. Oh, you remember we spoke about that. Will move to the anode. Will move to the anode of cell. And the cations, and that's how it does maintain the balance. Cations will move to the cathode half cell. Please take note of this little note. These are things that I have seen missing here and there. <clears throat> and I'm trying to put them together for you. Now, my last um, slide before we get into solution would be quickly to talk about caution on electrolytes. Caution on electrolytes. We got to be very careful when we choose electrolyte. All right, caution on electrolyte. E quickly. Right, caution on electrolyte, and I'll talk about the E cell value. Caution on electrolytes. All right, substances such as, I'll give you three common ones silver chloride, um, barium sulfate. and barium chloride are insoluble, hence cannot be used as electrolytes. Nitrates are the best choice. And why? From grade 10. All nitrates are soluble. Okay. <clears throat> what is the effect of a precipitate on the E cell value? What is the effect of a precipitate on the E cell value? Remember, guys, E cell is equal to E cathode minus E what? Anode. 
the formation of a precipitate. The formation of a precipitate in the half cell. Reduces the concentration. Remember, we do have a standard concentration. So it reduces the concentration. Now, what is the impact? I'm quickly going to give you a table here that would guide you. What is the impact? So here, I'll have E cathode. I'll have E anode. And then I'll have a cell. Now, if the concentration of the electrolyte in the cathode half cell increases, cell will also increase. This one decreases, your E cell will decrease. For the anode, if it increases, then your E cell will decrease. And if this one decreases, your E cell value will increase. Please take note of that. Very, very important. Uh, we need to answer questions now. It's already 6 o'clock. We need to jump into questions. So much to talk about when it comes to electrochemistry. All right? And when we talk about a flat cell, we're saying our E cell value, therefore, equals to zero. We have reached a state of chemical equilibrium. We have reached a state of chemical equilibrium where we say the rate of oxidation equal to the rate of reduction. Guys, I wouldn't be able to complete all the theory these are just little things that I need you to know. I wouldn't be able to complete all the theory. There's so much more that I could talk about. But if you know what I've just spoken about and you know how to deal with your half cells, we would be good in terms of calculation. Okay, so this is our table. I am going to be using the 4B. I'll be referring back to this table here and there. <coughs> okay, guys, quickly. Uh, there's something I need to, oh gosh, so much, so much to talk about. Uh, this one is talking about spontaneity, spontaneity of a cell. A spontaneous, spontaneity of a cell. All right. Let me do this. When when we have a spontaneous reaction, a spontaneous reaction, a spontaneous reaction is a reaction that occurs on its own, that occurs on its own. That is, when we say it's a reaction, we're talking about redox, okay? It is an exothermic reaction. It is an exothermic what? Reaction. So we're saying temperature rises. Temperature rises how do you know steps of answering a question number one <clears throat> excuse me write your half cell reactions number two if the reactants in the reaction are on the left side are on the left side of the half reactions then the reaction is spontaneous that's just a quick way to get through the reaction is spontaneous i'll use this question as a quick guide to assist us in seeing that just a quick one one question on spontaneous <clears throat> one question only all right it says which container zinc or copper 
will be more suitable to store, check, solutions of nickel ions. All right? So basically, we're saying we have this and we have that. This is copper. This is uh, zinc. And we have nickel ions inside. Nickel ions inside. Use refer to the table of standard and fully explain by referring to strength of reducing what agents guys the first thing we are going to do is to write out the three of them and we are going to compare both of them all right let's check this nickel okay if we write if we look at copper and nickel let's go back quickly so that you would see here's my table and here's the 4b table we are looking for nickel and copper I'm going to use a highlighter from the top there and guys there are three coppers okay copper reactions <clears throat> the question would always guide you on which one to use in this case i'll be using 0 0.34 which is copper two plus all right oh here's my nickel nickel is the first one that i'm seeing my table continues and where is copper copper is right here all right so i am seeing nickel first is that okay so i'm going to write my reaction ni2 plus okay uh, remember this is the anode the anode reaction now will go the other way is that okay nickel will be oxidized because we said the anode is oxidation nickel um, i forgot to tell you about the z i'll tell you just now nickel to ni2 plus okay all right so this is what we have Nickel solid will be oxidized to Ni2 plus plus 2E. Now, copper was below, right? So it's copper 2 plus, copper 2 plus, plus 2E to give us copper. All right, let's come here and let's check zinc and nickel. All right, we are going to compare where is zinc. Let me get my highlighter again quickly. Zinc. We're going, to, oh, I'm using a white one, you won't be able to see. All right. Ta, 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 ta. Okay, zinc is right here. Now, do you see the switch positions? Zinc is now on top of nickel. Guys, at this point, let me show you how to get your half reactions very easily. Remember, we spoke about A and C. Okay, so we're going to use, I call it the Zuma method, the press the X president of A and C. So if I write the letter Z, the letter Z would be written this way. All right? Check. The letter Z goes that way because we said A, N, C. If you remember that, that's why the 4B table is just lovely to play with. A, N, C. And we talk about the Zuma. Now, the arrows will always show you where to go. For me to write the anode half reaction, you see I'm starting from the right, going to the left zinc first okay and then my nickel all right let's check so zinc all right to what zinc two plus plus two e and then i have my nickel two plus plus two e give me what nickel now we have written down our half reactions if you read my note number two says if the reactants in the reactions are on the left side of your half reactions, then the reaction is spontaneous. All right, check. What are my reactants here? I have Ni2 plus and I have copper. Are they on the left-hand side? No. Do you see that they are, this one is on the right-hand side. Uh, some, of you, some of you are lost. Let me show you what I mean. Nickel 2 plus and zinc. Where are they? They are on the left-hand side. Oh, so it means this reaction is spontaneous and not safe to store. Not safe to store Ni2 plus in zinc. Why? The zinc solid will be oxidized to zinc aqueous. So you figure out that first. If they are on the left-hand side, remember, these reactants must be on the left side. If they are not on the left, 
oh, then this reaction is not spontaneous, which means nothing would happen. All right, now let's answer. We are, they said, which container will be more suitable? Copper. So my answer now, first answer, it is what? Copper. Already one mark there. And the question will be why. <coughs> All right. Remember, this one here is oxidation. The examiner says you should refer to the strength of reducing agent. Oh, so I would say zinc is a stronger oxidizing agent than nickel two plus ions. All right. Already by say, uh, no. They said we should refer to reducing agent, sorry. By, uh, zinc was oxidized, so it's a stronger reducing agent. All right? A stronger reducing agent. By mentioning that, it's a stronger reducing agent. One mark there. Then NI, check, another mark. Do you see I'm already on three? Okay? Which means, therefore, zinc will be oxidized to ink 2 plus making it unsafe already that's my third mark all right but we want to compare that with also copper okay on the other hand we can then say <coughs> uh, since the zinc is a stronger reducing agent then um nickel 2 plus ions zinc will be oxidized so it is unsafe. But it is not safe. Let's use that. It is not safe to store. Okay. Guys, you are already done because they said you should choose and you are fully explaining and you are done. All right. Because when you use copper, copper, um, we don't have a reaction on that side. Are we okay? We are done answering our questions. Let's quickly check a galvanic cell. One question on galvanic. The electrochemical cell illustrated below is set up under standard conditions. The first thing I'm going to do before I even start answering is to check which one is my anode and which one is my cathode. Luckily for me this time around, this is a standard question. The examiner gave me aluminium and chlorine. Let's go check quickly. That will inform what we are going to do aluminium and chlorine we go again from the top ta 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 ta, ta. We are, oh that's al the first one you find remember anode half cell let's check ta 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 chlorine is somewhere there oh that's the cathode guys once you do that identification boom you are done so let's write it there this is going to be the anode half cell and that is the cathode half cell. So what are we saying? Electrons are actually moving. So another way they could have done this is to do that. Electrons are moving that way. Okay. The anode is positive in the electrolytic ape. It means the anode is negative. They'll ask you all of this. All right. The ions. Anions move towards the anode. Which ones are the anions? The anions are negative and the cations are positive. So those are the ways they are going to ask you all of this. The cations move towards the cathode. The anions move towards the anode. <coughs> uh, all right. What type of energy conversion takes place in the cell above? Guys, everyone should be able to get those marks. What are we doing? Number one, it is chemical. Two, electrical energy. We are producing electricity. So you write the word energy. State two standard conditions. Guys, any of the three would work here. Any of the three. Okay, somebody's going to write any of the three in the exam. So let's let's write it. Temperature of 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. We could use pressure here, guys. One atmosphere because there's a gas. Is that okay? And we could definitely concentration of what? One mole per cubic decimeter. 
uh write down the name or formula of the metal x i told you whenever you have a gas we are going to use what platinum as an electrode and i gave you the reasons which electrode is the anode <coughs> already we know number four it is what al why is it okay give a reason don't say it's on top on the table is that okay that is wrong that is where oxidation takes this right so we'd say it is a stronger reducing what agent it's a stronger reducing agent than cl take note don't say it's uh, on the left hand side or it's on top of the table those are not scientific explanations all right here we go write down the formula of the electrolyte in half cell b now if it is chlorine there it must also be a chloride um chloride salt so you can just simply write 8.5.1 and write cl minus electrolyte we are done there all right 8.5.2 cell notation oh this is very important cell notation please it's as simple so i'll be doing some teaching as i'm answering simple as a b c it is the anode it is your bridge and it is your cathode but please uh, let me quickly <coughs> excuse me talk about it here all right guys your cell notation okay cell notation then let's let's quickly just do something here all right so we're going to have a bridge there on the side you have the anode reactants and here you have your cathode reactants please just take note of something here this must start all right it must start with a solid this thing here must start with a solid and it must also end with a solid okay i used to talk about a love story here but time will not really allow me but i could just quickly explain to make it very lovely all right so if if i i, I am here i wanted to take note of this let me use about 10 seconds to explain this okay this is where i am all right this is bishop okay and here is my um sweetie chocolate pie all right and that is that is sue and sue is crying for help guys how will i save sue this is a favorite story of mine what happens i'll have to slide down all right this electrode is that okay then i would go into the solution so this is me now I'll have to go through the salt bridge. Ta ta ta. It's an action movie. Ta 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 ta. This is me. Now what happens? I get here and I'll have to climb on the metal. Is that fine? I'll have to get to the metal. Okay, let me paint myself blue. Here. And I then meet my shoe. That's a very lovely love story there now if i ask you to tell me the path that i followed what will you tell me do you notice i started from al i had to climb that electrode that's why it's a solid then i jumped into the solution do you see that then i came in to the salt bridge i jumped into the solution again and i climbed up using the metal and that's how you write your cell notation so it is just you writing the movement from the anode to the cathode where did we start from al solid we move towards al three plus aqueous then we went to the salt bridge <clears throat> all right now we have what chlorine gas and cl minus negative one and zero in terms of oxidation number but we are looking at the reduction here which is a decrease so how does this number decrease 
from zero to negative one. So I'll start with chlorine, which is a gas, chloride ions, which is a chaos. But remember, it must end with a solid. <coughs> Excuse me. And what is the solid we climbed up with? Oh, we actually climbed on platinum. Now, my dear learners, once you write your uh, faces out like this, then we put what you call a single stroke, which is a face separator in between two faces. So, uh, solid and aqueous, they are in different phase. So I'm going to put a face separator. Clo uh, gas and aqueous, put a face separator. Aqueous and solid, please take note. This is called a phase separator. Phase separator. So it's just a beautiful love story that you just need to enjoy. And that's how this topic can be so can be done so easily. All right. 8.6. Calculate the initial EMF of the cell. Uh, that's a giveaway, a complete giveaway. Once you have been able to identify your anode and cathode, 8.6 becomes a child's play. E cell, please write the formula. Don't write cat. There's no cat in this. Right? E cathode and E anode. Do we know our cathode already? All right? This one here is aluminum and this one here is chlorine. Okay, sweet. We go and check. Let's check the value of aluminum. I know it's 1,66 or something like that. But let's quickly check. AL. Yeah, negative 1,66. <coughs> and chlorine, positive 1,36. All right? Negative 1,36. That's the anode half cell. And the cathode, uh, positive 1,36. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I missed something there. Yeah, I made a mistake here. Um, no. <coughs> Aluminium, and this is chlorine. So what do we know? Positive 1,36 minus negative 1,66. Do you see there? We are going to get a positive answer. 6 plus 6 is 12. 3 plus 6 is 9. That's a 0 there. 1 plus 1 is two so we have positive three comma two guys this positive tells me it is spontaneous and it is exothermic remember we spoke about it galvanic cells are spontaneous cells <coughs> galvanic cells are spontaneous 8.7 how will the initial voltmeter reading be affected if silver nitrate is used in the electrolyte as a salt bridge? Ooh, this is interesting. If silver nitrate is used as an electrolyte in the salt bridge, this is going to be interesting. I promise you. Let me get a very clean picture here. Silver nitrate is now used as an electrolyte what is going to happen what is the impact of this uh ta, 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 ta. let me get a fresh page we answer that uh, i don't know if i'm going to be able to do the electrolytic cell okay just want you to see this quickly all right now if i use silver nitrate here AgNO3. We are going to have Ag plus NO3 minus. Remember, this is the anode, all right? And this is the cathode. <coughs> okay, all right. The cations are the ones that are going to come here. The cations are positive, so the positive ones will come here while the negative ones would go there. Negative anions, all right? These are anions. And these are cations. Oh, remember what we have here. We've got Cl minus. Now, which ones are the cations? Ag plus. We have got a problem. 
This is the caution I spoke to you about. Be careful of silver chloride, barium chloride, and barium sulfate. Oh, check. At the cathode, what are we going to form? Form silver chloride. What did we say silver chloride is? It is a precipitate. It's going to happen. The concentration of chloride ions will decrease. Ah, concentration of chloride ions decreases. And I gave you a simple table to use. All right, you don't need to cram, you just need to know. And this is what you need to check. Look, E cell equals to what? E cathode minus E what? Anode. Value decreases. This answer is going to decrease as well. All right, it's a precipitate. The chloride ion <coughs> concentration decreases. Therefore, the E cell value will also what? Decrease. Guys, you are done with the whole from silver chloride, it is a precipitate. Therefore, the chlor concentration of chloride ion decreases. If that decreases, then the E cell value. Please go back to that table. It will completely help you to answer this question. Take note of those um, precipitates that we said we should not form. Let me see uh, if we can try this. Okay. The simplified diagram, please, my dear learners, this is, is an electrolytic cell. It's a DC supply. Why a DC power supply? Why do we use a DC power supply? To maintain polarity of electrodes. Remember, direct current. If it is alternating, then what happens? We'll be moving from positive to negative and negative to positive in each half cycle electrodynamics. All right. Electrolysis of sodium chloride solution. Please take note, there's water here. All right. Define the term electrolysis. I think we're good with that. Chlorine gas. Oh, my dear learners, please listen. Chlorine gas is released at electrode X. Watch this. If Immediately, the examiner tells me chlorine gas. Chlorine gas is produced. Let's go to our table quickly and see where we have chlorine gas. <coughs> I want to show you something smart that you can do. Chlorine gas is formed. All right. Here is my chlorine. Um, it's at the bottom. Okay. To form chlorine gas, we've got to go the other way. You see, Cl2 is on here, on the left. But we need, since it's produced, it must be on the right hand side. So, what am I going to do? Quickly check. I want to show you something very smart. All right. So, for me to have chlorine gas, I'm saying 2Cl minus, all right, to give us Cl2 plus 2E. Now, chloride ions are negative. Chloride ions are negative what happens they are attracted they are attracted to the positive electrode to the positive what electrode and do you remember what ape stands for the anode is positive in the electrolytic cell wow so examiner says chloride chlorine gas is formed at X. That's now easy. So we have chlorine gas. Chloride ions are here. Automatically, this becomes what? Positive, and this becomes negative. So this is the anode. We are done there. Letter X, write down the letter X or Y where oxidation takes place. We know it is now what? X, because oxidation occurs at the anode half reaction that takes place at y now quickly i'm going to guide you here under this particular one okay under this particular cell called the electrolysis of sodium chloride 
um, quickly. Electrolysis of sodium chloride. I've got two minutes. <coughs> Electrolysis of sodium chloride solution. All right. Uh, guys, because of our time, I will not be able to give a lot of notes. Um, so please, you take down notes. Write it in your own words once you understand this. Okay. So we have, let's say, positive there and negative. What we have here is Na plus, Cl minus, and there's water. All right. Now, if these ones are positive electrodes and negative electrode, what happens? This negative will be attracted towards that because of different charges. And then what happens? This one would be attracted towards that. But don't forget, this whole thing has water. So this will be my cathode quickly. And I'm around, I have switched it. This becomes the anode. What happens at the anode? Oxidation. So 2Cl- minus will lose electrons to form chlorine gas. Here, at the cathode, please take note, water is a stronger oxidizing agent. Water is a stronger oxidizing agent. When you use the word stronger, you are comparing, so you must mention the other part than that. So, water will be reduced. Take note of this. Very key. Water will be reduced. All you need to do is to go to your table. Time is up. I want to share something briefly with you. I forgot to actually put a picture of it, but I'll just let you know. Um, quickly, water will be reduced. So, we go and look for water. Uh, it's zero comma. Just want to give you the value quickly so that you don't stress. You just go and write it. Uh, I've forgotten the value. Okay, let's just look for it quickly. All right, it's near chlorine. Oh, all right, so we have chlorine here. No, no, sorry, it's near sodium. Sodium, water, yeah, it's negative 0, 0,83. This is the one you are going to write. Please take note. H2O plus 2E to get hydrogen gas and 2OH minus. So let's write that quickly. <coughs> um, this is the half reaction that takes place. 2H2O plus 2E to give us what? Hydrogen gas, please. And finally, what happens? The sodium ions, the sodium ions react with the hydroxide ions. All right? to form sodium hydroxide, making the solution basic, making the solution that is pH now would be greater than 7. Guys, you can use this information to answer the rest of the questions. Unfortunately, I have to sign out, but please go and look for our songs. We've created songs. All right, to help you um, run through the whole of electrochemistry. We've created lovely, lovely songs that you can go check. Check out our songs. All right, just going to write it here. Check out songs on electrochemistry. All right, just go to Crazy Physics and look for... <coughs> electrochemistry their songs if you know those songs you are good with electrochemistry they'll help you with all the definition and all the concepts guys it's always a privilege serving you and serving you again this morning do have yourselves a very very lovely day this is crazy physics and out and wishing you all the best as you prepare for your exams i'll see you next time goodbye <laughs>